Greetings everyone. My name is Eugene. Um, I'm here to prepare you for 2019 examinations, April, August and November. So I would like to start by introducing the subjects, or I mean the course, Bachelor of Education, Senior Primary. And this is the subject is Natural Science and Health Education for BES and SH22. All right, now, why do we need this presentation? Well, the first bullet says to prepare students for 2019-3 exams, April, August, and November, and also to note and replace common mistakes that are done by previous students. When I'm marking the assignments, when I'm marking the exams, there are always common mistakes that I need to iron out, so I thought I can share this with you so that they can, I can guide you. We, you also get to meet a tutor and get my contact details and then also I'll show you how to answer multiple choice questions effectively and also to set up meet, a, a meeting, face-to-face -face meeting with a tutor. Especially for the students that are in Windu, I'm advising you that at least once a month we meet up and then we do the stuff that we can, that you are struggling with. Um, just a few weeks ago I had a meeting with one of the students who uh, um, IOL can organize an office for us, can even organize a board and some, th some, uh, the board and the class so that we can meet there and do our lesson. Now, what are you expected to, to remember? What, are you expe what, is, what is it that is expected from you? Number one, you must be able to remember the names of the apparatus or equipment and also their functions. So, for instance, a, a beaker is used for mixing uh, two liquids. Um, a, a test tube or a, a stand, or you need to know the, 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 the names of the apparatus. You should also know them, the, the functions of this apparatus. You must be able to balance chemical equations. I'm, I'm advising you that we do this face to face. Because if I do it here and you, and you can't respond to this, I'd rather do this with you when I see you face to face. And also calculate molecular mass and also the moles. Relate hydrocarbons to the, the, the derivatives and also write correct formulas. And then the last bullet says use the periodic table of the elements to draw atoms. Now here with me I have the details of potassium 13, 939. I want to draw an atom of sodium of potassium so what I need to do first I need an electronic configuration of potassium so I say K capital K of course and then I say in the first shell it takes up two electrons and then in the second shell it, it takes up eight electrons so far I have used 10 of the 19 so meaning that I have nine more and I know that the third shell can also take up eight and then it means the last can take up four I mean one electron sorry so so from this electronic configuration one can tell that potassium has one two three four shells we can also say that potassium is in group number one because the last shell contains one electron so very important to remember the number of shells gives you the period number. Period number, period one, two, three, four. And then the last shell gives you from which group is potassium. So it's in group one on your far left. So what do we do? We draw our atom. We start off with a nucleus, right? And then we draw our first shell. We put in two electrons, we draw our second shell. It's very easy to do this now, once you have the electronic configuration. So this one has two electrons here, two here, two here, two there. So that's eight all together. Then you draw the la second last shell that has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then of course the very last one that has one electron. So we can say now 
inside here the nucleus there are 19 protons so p plus 1 and then for us to get the neutral number we say 39 we say 39 take away 19 we get 20 and inside here there are 20 neutrons so that's an atom of potassium very important the electronic configuration that one will guide you that which uh, which shell the atom has how many shells from which group is the atom and which shell contains how many electrons okay let's move on to the next one um, more general expectations you must be able to distinguish between compounds mixtures and pure elements very 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 important please you must be able to distinguish between the three so we know that compounds compounds can either be ionic or covalent all right so compounds are chemically bonded uh, 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 compounds are chemically bonded while mixtures they are not chemically bonded and and you can go further by giving examples of mixtures like air what uh, sea water those are the common uh, mixtures because the, the the gases of the air they, they are not bonded together so they are not chemically bonded they are just mixed together and also the sea water is made up of sand it's made up of pure water it's made up of salts it's made up of rocks so it is not um it, it is not a, a compound because the, the the, the water, the sea, the, the, the salt, the rocks, they are not chemically bonded. And then we have pure elements. We find pure elements classified in the periodic table. But you never find compounds or mixtures in the periodic table. What we find in the periodic table are pure elements like carbon, oxygen, hydrogen. And those are the ones that makes up mixtures, compounds, and ionic compounds, and, and, and covalent compounds. You should also be able to interpret trends in the periodic table. For instance, um, let me just give a quick sketch of a periodic table. All right, and I have um, I have group one here. Group one and two, I have um, a transition metals. Then here I have group three, group four, group five, group six, and then groups group eight. So that is a very simple sketch of the periodic table. So this is my group one, this is my group two. And then here I have, I have transition metals. I have group three, four, five, six, six, seven, and eight. Okay, what are the trends? When I refer to trends or when we refer to trends, what are we referring to? You should be able to know that on your left hand side, we have non-metals and then on the right hand side these are metals this are sorry on the left hand side these are metals sorry for that and then on the right hand side we have non-metals so that's the very first trend that you should be able to know at this stage then the second the, the other trends that you need to understand is that as you move from metals to nonmetals, you exp you find out that these guys have more electrons in their outer shells compared to the metals. So that's why if you are in group one, you have one electron in the outer shell. If you are in group two, you have two electrons in the outer shell. And if you are in group three, you have three. In group four, you have four. And then in group eight, it's either you have a full outer shell or you have eight electrons. So as you move to the right you have is either you have more electrons in the outer shell or you have full outer shell all right all right let's move on we move on to the third bullet it says transform formulas to calculate the missing quantities all right so i gave an example there of resistance power force weight and frequency very important formulas and the good thing about this formula is that they will be provided at the end of the question paper so you don't have to worry about them what but what you need to know is how to transform them 
these formulas, what am I referring to when I'm saying you should be able to transform them? So let's say, for instance, you are given the formula that says voltage is equal to current times resistance. Right? You are given that formula, and now you, are, you want to find current. I mean, let's say you want to find uh, resistance. You are given current, and you are given voltage. You are given voltage. So how do you make resistance the subject of the formula? Or how do you get to say resistance is equal to anything or all the other things? So because we are multiplying here, so we need to get rid of this current. So by dividing both sides by I by I so that the I or the current can cancel, gone, gone. And then in the end, in the end, we end up with resistance is equal to voltage over current or you can simply say that resistance is the same thing as voltage over current so that's how you transform a formula very simple technique but please if you're not getting this please at the end of this presentation i will give my number or my email address and then you get in touch with me so we can set up a face-to-face if you if you're not in window, just make it the point that you see me before you sit for your exams. I know you're not going to regret for paying for your transport. Just come to Windhoek or to Commerce because of the one-on-one -on -one presentation or one-on-one -on -one class. You are going to be grateful for that. So the next one, let's say we want to work with weight. So we have weight. Weight is the same thing as mass times gravity and what you are given you are given the weight you are given the gravity you want to find the mass what do you do you divide both sides by gravity find gravity so that the gravity cancels here so it cancels off here and then in the end what you have you have mass is the same thing as weight over gravity or you can say mass is equal to weight over gravity so that's how you transform the formulas and these formulas are very easy to remember so that's why some people decided to come up with something like this so they draw a triangle and then they say in this triangle I will divide it into three parts and then you look at um, weight because it's, 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 you multiply the other two, you put weight on top, and then you say um, there's multiplication here for mass and gravity. So that if I am looking for gravity, I'll just cover this. Then I'll have weight divided by the mass. If I'm looking for the mass, I would say weight divided by the gravity. And then if I'm looking for the weight, of course, I will say the mass and the gravity. So that's how you can also remember the formula. I mean, how to transform the formula if you're struggling to do it this way. But you should know how to do it this way because you are going to teach the kids how to do it. So and if you don't know it, you're going to have a hard time. Okay. And also, you should be able to distinguish between an image formed by a plane mirror in that formed by the lens all right as we know that the image that is formed by the plane mirror is that image is not real it, it's it's a visual image it's the image that is not there but the image formed by a lens it's it's a it's a real image it's upside down so that's those are some of the differences the mirror image it, it's upright the lens image it's real and it's upright and the mirror the image by the plane mirror is it's that it is that it is the same size as the object, but the one that is formed by the lens is either too small or too big. So you should be able to distinguish between an image formed by a plane mirror and the one formed by a lens. Let's move on. More general expectations. You should be able to define concepts like alloys, isotopes, even a force. But, but very important, you must be able to define alloys, isotopes. Very tricky. Uh, definitions but just know the keywords and then describe concepts or processes like sublimation dispersion neutralization very important important for 
you need to remember neutralization because th there will be a lot of marks on neutralization and differentiate between renewable and non-renewable sources you should be able to list these are when you are asked to list you must be able to get these marks because this is things that to remember these are the things that it doesn't require you to think or to apply because it is something that is already there all you need to do is just to remember it so the uses of gases electricity metals magnets electromagnets and also write chemical formula of compounds i think i would like to shed light on this one how to write chemical formula of compounds so let's say we want to write down the formula of the one given ammonium carbonate ammonium carbonate is made up of two polyatomic ions so very important you must remember your polyatomic ions all right ammonium ammonium is nh4 plus 1 so meaning that this one behaves like a group 1 element because it should lose one electron while the carbonate group the carbonate group says c o 3 minus 2 so it behaves like a group 6 element because it should gain two electrons now if you look at these charges this one should lose one this one should gain two so there's not a balance here so what we need to do we need to have another ammonium so that one goes the other one goes so that in the end how many ammonium have you used you have used two groups of ammonium you put a two there and then you have only used one carbonate please please if you don't get this make 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 an appointment with me i'll make time for you we can set up a venue at IOL so we can do this again. It's something very simple. All you need to remember is your polyatomic ions. You must remember them from the back of your head. If you can't remember them, please let's set up the meeting so I can help you remember them. All right, let's move on to the next slide. Um, um, these are important tips that I thought I can give them to you. Like... Um, when you are calculating pressure, when you are labeling a waveform, when you are, um, are drawing ray diagrams, very important. Oh, that one also needs a one-on-one. -on -one. When you are writing down chemical formula of compounds, and then when you are working with parallel and series connection of resistors, especially parallel connection, when you are finding the total resistance, that it has to be done one on one because if i do it here not everyone will get it but at least if we are together we can do it and also sources of energy extraction of metals and then materials very important building or even clothing so these are the important tips that you must put more emphasis on these things because all the three exams these things are there please make sure that you make time for these things all right, the next slide, we continue with the important tips, electronic configuration. Remember the electronic configuration? So let's say we want to have the electronic configuration of oxygen. Oxygen is O816, so we say O, eight electrons, two in the first, six in the second. So oxygen has in the sec is in the second period, one, two period. Oxygen is in the sixth group because the last shell contains six electrons. Very, very, very important. All right. And then we move on to biodegradable and non-biodegradable. So this concept, you need to remember them. There again, neutralization reaction pops up. When you have an acid plus a base, that's a neutralization. I just want to write something on that. Neutralization reaction. Um, Okay, if you have an acid and then you add a base, this is what we call a neutralization reaction. 
because the acid and the base they should neutral each other they should neutralize each other this is uh, maybe 3 on the pH scale this is maybe 13 in the end this must be 7 so because 7 is the neutral on our pH scale all right so if you have an acid then you add a metal oxide or you add a metal hydroxide you get the same product it's either you or you, it's obvious that you're getting a salt and water very very important you must remember this it's like a guideline it, so it tells you that if I have an acid I add a metal oxide or a metal hydroxide I get a salt and water but if I have an acid and I add a metal carbonate carbonate this one has three products unlike the first one so for this one you are going to get the salt of course the, the main reason for neutral for the for neutralization reactions is for you to it, it allows us to produce the salts we add carbon dioxide because of the carbonate and then the water of course so acid metal carbonate three products acid metal oxide or metal hydroxide we only have two products you must remember that okay and then you should also be you should study the image formed by convex and the concave lens you must study the wave equation how to use a wave equation very very important just the other day the student that i had told me that if you if you can't remember this a wave equation the wave equation says velocity of speed is equal to a frequency times lambda if you don't want to use this equation you can simply use this one speed speed is equal to distance over time you definitely gonna get the same answer for as long as you treat now your wavelength as your distance and then you use frequency to get the time all right so but please one-on-one -on -one session will do for these things okay wave equation dc and ac direct current and a alternate current you must be able to differentiate between the, between the two and also use the correct formula for for the mechanics and electricity topics and the good thing about these topics is that the unit the formulas will be provided it's up to you to choose the correct formula to transform it and find the what you are expected to do all right more important tips like i said at the beginning of this uh, presentation trends in the periodic table left to right top to bottom boiling and melting points you must be able to remember these things correct scales on graph graphs access draw electrical circuits very important temporary and permanent magnets effects of acid and bases on litmus papers you should be able to remember this these are important tips all right um um so that's my number you that's my email address please get in touch with me so we can set up a one-on-one -on -one session at least once a month even if it means you to travel to window just for this class please do it because you are going to be very very grateful for that for for that lesson all right thank you for watching and good luck for your examinations